Thank you and welcome to the show today. The topic today is the Family Foundation Fund, and we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the Family Foundation Fund, the Executive Director, uh, Mr. Oni Kirk. And of course, Mr. Kirk, let me welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Well, it's good to be here, Dr. Haney. We've watched you over the years and been very grateful for the opportunity to be here with you today. Very good. I thank you, and I appreciate that, uh, Ms. Kirk. Uh, Ms. Kirk, you know, the uh, Family Fund Foundation is uh, 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 an effort on your part and others to uh, deal with uh, some of the problems that we're having with our young people today. Yes. Sir. And uh, we'd like to talk about that today and to uh, see how we might be able to assist you in doing whatever you're trying to do in terms of dealing with these uh, young people. Yeah. But before we get started in that, Mr. Kirk, let's have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that uh, motivated you in a real sense to become involved with uh, what would eventually become the Family Fund Foundation. I mean, the Family Foundation Fund. Yes. Then we'll talk about other things. Well, uh, over the years, I, I grew up in Texas. I grew up in El Paso, Texas. My father's a pastor there, uh, Reverend Oni I Isaac Kirk, Sr. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a wonderful life, Dr. Haney. Dad taught us the importance of integrity, mm -hmm. uh, respect for those in authority, mm -hmm. the importance of hard work. Mm -hmm. After I graduated, I went to Texas Tech mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. And while at Texas Tech, I was introduced to the Southwestern Publishing Company. Mm -hmm. Southwestern is located here in Nashville. So my first summer was 1971, I came here to sell books. When I completed college, Southwestern offered me an opportunity to be a sales manager. I was uh, probably the first minority in mm -hmm. management yeah. at mm -hmm. Southwestern. Mm -hmm. While I was a manager, I began to see that, I mean, it was a great program because it taught you how to deal with people, how to, how to set goals and achieve those goals. But I saw that when there was a young man I was working with as a manager mm -hmm. who came from a home where there was not a father, mm -hmm. he always would uh, seem to fail during the summertime. Mm -hmm. I mean, generally he wouldn't make any money or be in debt or he might uh, not tell the truth on his sales report mm -hmm. or not keep account of his finances. And I would see young ladies mm -hmm. who came from a single parent mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. they always fared well. And then as I processed that, I said, I said, you know, interesting, the young lady saw her mother mm -hmm. model responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, uh, but the young boy did not have a man who showed him the way mm -hmm. to manhood. Mm -hmm. I married in, in uh, 1977. Mm -hmm. I've been married 28 years this December the 3rd to the same woman, Marginelle Good. Kerr. Mm -hmm. and we have, tw uh, we, we've been married 28 years and we have eight children. Mm -hmm. Our oldest is 24 and our youngest is 7. Mm -hmm. and, and in the process of that, I understand as a father, mm -hmm. it is the father who imparts Good. destiny. Good. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you have a home where there's no father? father? Mm -hmm. Who is going to impart the destiny? Mm -hmm. Well, I know my dad imparted destiny to me. Mm -hmm. he, taught me he taught me the value of hard work, as I said, but he also taught me the fear of the Lord Good. and to love the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you look at our society in America today, there are, the la as of the last census, 35 million homes mm -hmm. where children grow up absent Good. of their biological father. Mm -hmm. 35 million in this mm -hmm. nation. In our community, in the African American community, 70% of the homes have no father. father. Mm -hmm. well, then you look at what's happening in the culture. Mm -hmm. Well, what my motivation was, I said, you know, you can't save the whole world. Mm -hmm. But you may have heard the starfish so story at one time, mm -hmm. Dr. Hayden. You know, that been a storm. Mm -hmm. And all these starfish were up on the beach. Mm -hmm. And an old man was walking down the beach, and he would pick mm -hmm. up a starfish and throw it back into the oh, ocean. All right. mm -hmm. It was thousands of them out mm -hmm. there. A young man comes jogging down the beach and say, old man, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to save all these starfish. Mm -hmm. Good. The old man picked up another starfish and he threw it out into the ocean. Okay. He says, I can save, save that one. one. All right, all right. Well, see, <laughs> and looking at That's it, exactly we're, it. Mm -hmm. we're not able to touch the masses, mm -hmm. but we have tremendous stories and mm -hmm. testimonies of young men that we have mentored and fathered mm -hmm. who've gone on to achieve wonderful and great things in their lives. Very good. 
<laughs> now, and, and of course, uh, Mr. Kirk, we're getting ready for our first commercial break. And uh, when we come back, we'll give you an opportunity to elaborate upon some of the things that you're talking about. Uh, but uh, that's essentially what we wanted to do. We wanted to sort of get some idea in terms of uh, what motivated you to become involved in this and to uh, identify right. some of the real problems that we're having with our young people today. Right. And this problem with uh, 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 homes without fathers. Right. I mean, this is a problem that we've been struggling with over the last 25 or 30 years, and hopefully you've got some answers for us uh, during this next segment. Yeah. And of course, we'll be back with our, our audience following this very, very short commercial break. We're talking to Mr. Orange.